The purpose of this mini lecture is to give you a little background on pH and pOH. Um, in any sample of pure water, if you have pure water, you have nothing but water molecules there. And most of the water molecules will exist in their molecular form, but a small percentage will just on their own, they will ionize. They'll break apart into their hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. Now, if you're in an advanced chemistry class, uh, please note this is a little bit of a simplification because the hydrogen ions don't really exist out there just by themselves. They will, they will um, form up and form larger ions with some other water molecules. But for our purposes, the simplification works just fine. And this auto-ionization of water just happens naturally. It just happens. Now, it's an equilibrium process, meaning that some of the water molecules at any given time are dissociating into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, and at the same time, there's a certain number of hydrogen ions and hydro hyd hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions that are finding each other and reforming water molecules, and it's all at equilibrium. Since it is at equilibrium, we can write an equilibrium expression for this. And the equilibrium expression that we write is a special one. We call it the K sub W, so it's really a, a KEQ, but we'll call it the K sub W because it's for the auto-ionization of water. And that is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion times the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And we don't have to worry about the concentration of the water because it is a pure liquid and that is left out of the equilibrium expression. Now for water at 25 degrees C, uh, the equilibrium constant for this is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. Now we can use this information to find out what the concentration of the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion is at 25 degrees C. Because in pure water, if the concentration of the hydroxide ion is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion. If we look at our balance equation up above, we note that if we have pure water, the only source of our hydrogen ion and our hydroxide ions is the water. So for every one water molecule that dissociates, we're going to get one hydrogen ion, we're going to get one hydroxide ion. So their concentrations must equal each other. If we then plug that information into our K sub W expression, we're saying the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to X times X or X squared. This is equal to one times 10 to the minus 14th and we can solve for x, and that is 1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. So in pure water, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. Now, chemists along the line said, well, it's a kind of a pain to be working with all of these really small numbers in these scientific notation. It'd be simpler if we had some kind of system where we didn't have to do that. So they came up with a definition where they defined pH and pOH, and they defined the pH as the negative log of the concentration of the hydroxide of the hydrogen ion, excuse me. And the pOH is the negative log of a hydroxide ion. Now the reason for the negative sign in there is just to change the sign. Because these concentrations are generally much less than one or less than one, uh, the exponents are negative exponents, and if you take the log of them, you're going to get a negative number, and again, the chemists didn't really want to deal with negative numbers either, so they said, well, let's make these nice, uh, nice fairly low numbers um, that don't have any negative sign to them, so we'll just change the sign on them. Now, be aware that if you have to go back the other direction, I mean, this is where you can calculate the pH if you know the concentration of the hydrogen ion, you can also constantly calculate the concentration of the hydrogen ion if you know the pH. And in order to do that, you would take 10 raised to the power of the negative pH will give you the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And similarly, if you take uh, 10 raised to the power of the negative pOH, that will give you the concentration of the hydroxide ion. Now, I want to give a derivation of one other nice useful formula that we have here. We go back to our auto-ionization constant for water and that equilibrium expression we list here. Now, if we were to take the negative log of both sides of this equation, we will get the negative log 
of the product of our hydrogen ion times the hydroxide ion is equal to the negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, which is equal to 14. Now at this point, please recall some of the math from your math class. Don't check your math skills at the door because you're going to need them in chemistry. The log of A times B is equal to the log of A plus the log of B, which means since in our expression up here we want the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion times the concentration of the hydroxide ion, we can break that out and say that's equal to the negative log of the hyd hydrogen ion concentration plus the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And those two terms probably look a little familiar to you at this point, and that's because those are our definitions of the pH and the pOH, which means that our pH plus our pOH must equal 14. And that formula will come in quite handy as we go through some of the other calculations we have to do. Now, one of the things that you'll be required to do is to go back and forth between uh, these variables of the hydrogen ion concentration, the hydroxide ion concentration, the pH, and the pOH. And I just want to map out the relationship between these. We said if you're going back and forth between the concentrations of the two ions, that's where you'll use your equilibrium expression. Now, we've already said if you're going back and forth between the hydrogen ion concentration and the pH, you need to use the pH formula. And likewise, for the pOH, there's a formula. Go back and forth between the hydroxide ion concentration and the pOH. And then we have this last equation that we just derived that said that the pH plus the pOH um, must add up to 14. Now, if you want some example problems of this, there's another video that goes through and works through some example problems involving all of these variables and how to get back and forth between them.